Now, one of the most common questions I get asked regarding the NVIDIA Shield Pro or really any of these Android TV devices is what can I do about the very small internal storage? And we can see on my device, it says total space 12 gig. Now, there's many ways you can actually upgrade the internal storage of your NVIDIA Shield. The most easiest is just to plug in a USB drive and expand the storage like that. Now, what I've done in my case, I bought the SanDisk uh, Pro Extreme Portable SSD. Now, as we can just see here, guys, this is a seriously fast SSD hard disk. Now, the way it connects to your device is over USB Type-C or over a standard USB Type-A cable. So, in this video today, let me show you how you can configure this device onto your NVIDIA Shield Pro or really any Android TV device. And I'll also show you how you can fix one of the biggest issues about this process, whereby certain applications just cannot be moved over to your adoptable storage. So even if you have got a USB drive or an SSD configured, those applications will only want to stay onto the internal storage, but I'll show you exactly how you can fix that as well. So once you have applied that fix, regardless of the application, all of that content will now be saved onto your SSD disk or whichever device you're using as your expandable storage. So do take a second, hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. So just for reference guys, this is how big this SSD drive is. Uh, we can see at the bottom here, we have a single uh, USB type C port. Um, you can gauge the size by comparing it to the Nvidia Shield remote. And in the box, we also get a, a normal type C to type C USB cable, and we also get an adapter. So I will also be doing a video on this device using it on the 4K Fire Stick because a typical USB drive in terms of, you know, read speeds, write speeds, you're lucky to get anywhere near 100 meg, but as we saw with this device, this is the Pro Extreme Edition, we should be able to get a lot faster speed. So if you do want to see that video on the 4K Fire Stick, make sure you are subscribed. Okay, let me now plug this into my shield. I want to plug this end over here into the Type-C USB port. I want to plug this adapter in and plug this into the USB 3.0 port on the shield. Okay, so I plug the SSD drive directly into my shield, into the USB 3 port. We can see here I have a notification just telling me that it's detected the SSD drive. Let's back out of that. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to settings, go down into device preferences. Let's go to storage. And here we can see we have two types of storage. We have the device uh, internal storage and we have the removable external storage. And in this case, we can see it has detected my extreme SSD drive. Uh, let me just say, guys, this video is not sponsored, but if Sandis do want to sponsor me, you know where to find me. Okay, so we can see that this is a 250 gig SSD drive. And what we want to do now is, is format this removable storage as internal adoptable storage. And what adoptable storage means is, is that we can now install applications directly to this storage, and we can also move applications to this storage. Now to do that, let's click on that. And we can see here we have the option to erase and format as device storage. Now, a quick word of warning here is as soon as you do this, this will, of course, wipe all of the contents of the SSD drive. But it also means that you cannot plug this into another device or onto your PC. The only place where you can use this is where you did the initial format. Now, if you want to take this to the next level, you can actually complete this format process via ADB commands. And what that means is you can say a certain percentage is formatted as adoptable storage and the rest is as external storage and the external storage you can use on any other device. But I'm not going to cover that in this video, but do leave me a comment below if you want to see how to do that. I guess so for now I'm going to click on arrays and format as device storage. Let's click on that. Let's click on format. Give that a second. And that should then format the drive and prepare it so we can now use this as internal adoptable storage. Okay, then we see this prompt just saying that before we can complete the setup, it does need to move some files to this new formatted adoptable storage. So let's click on move now just to complete the process. Okay, so while we're waiting for this, I'm actually going to complete five tests as soon as this finishes. The first test is going to be if we install an application from the official Google Play Store 
where does that install to? Does that go to internal storage or does that now go to our SSD drive? The next test is going to be if you install an application like side loading from downloader or from file linked, again, where does the application install to? Once we've confirmed that, the next test is going to be once we've already installed an application to the internal storage, how do we now move that over to our SSD drive? So that's the third test. The fourth test is going to be a key one whereby I'll show you that some applications just cannot be moved onto our adoptable storage, but then I'll show you how you can actually fix that. And then we'll actually move that unmovable application onto our SSD drive. So now that all the formatting is done, let's go back out of this. And here we can just see we now have two drives as device storage, the internal 12 gigabytes of storage, and now the massive or comparatively massive SanDisk Extreme SSD drive, which has about 246 gigs of free space. Okay, let's back out of that. And let's now do the first test, which is if we do install an application from the official Google Play Store, where does that application actually install to? Let me open that up. And let's just install this game over here. Click on install. And let's see where this installs to. Let's just open that up for a second just to make sure it's installed okay. That's working fine. Okay, let's back out of that. Well, let's close that. Let's now go into settings. Go to applications. Here is the game there. And we can see straight away that's actually defaulted to our SSD drive. So that's not going to take up any space of internal storage. The application was installed directly from the Play Store onto our SSD drive. Now that doesn't mean that every single application from the Play Store will automatically install to the SSD drive, but we can see in this example, it definitely has. Let's now do the second test whereby if you sideload an application using downloader or file linked, again, where does the application install to? Okay, so for a test from a downloads page, let's just get this uh, FTP server for Android TV. Let's click on that. Let's scroll down and click on the green download button. Okay, let's click on open just for a second, just to make sure it does start up okay. That's fine. Let's close that down. And once again, let's go over to settings, just to see that where did this side loaded application actually install to? And let's go to apps. Here's the application there. Let's click on that. And we can see in this example, this application actually went straight to internal storage. Let's just do one more test quickly. Here I'm just installing Chromium from our website. Let's click on install. Let's click on done. Let's press the home key. And let's now also check where did this side loaded application install to? Let's go to apps. Here it is. And we can see Chromium went directly to the SSD drive. So I think that kind of confirms that depending on how the application is written, some of them will go straight to your SSD drive or to your adoptable storage. And some of them will just always default to internal storage, even if you have got that adoptable storage configured. Let's back out of that. Now, let me just take this opportunity to say a massive thanks to all of the new members of my channel. Your support really does mean a lot. And if any of you guys want to sign up, I am doing a special promotion for the first 50 members, whereby all of you can join my private chat group. And in this chat group, we can talk about stuff, we can provide support to each other, and we can even share our APKs. So some of those applications, some of those toolboxes I'm working on, you guys can get early access to them. So if that sounds of interest to you, do have a look out for the join button. Thank you. Okay, so the third test, how do we now move an application that was previously installed onto internal storage over to our adoptable storage? Well, let's now use the FTP server as an example because we saw that application did install straight to the internal storage. Uh, here it is. Now moving applications is extremely easy on this. So where it says here storage used, we can see it's using 10 megabytes on internal storage. I can now click on that and just select my SanDisk USB drive. Let's click on that. And within a couple of seconds, that's now moved off our internal storage onto our adoptable storage. So again, very, very easy to use. Okay, let's back out of that. Now, for example, if I find a bigger application, here we can see this one is nearly 200 megs in size, a very common application. And of course, if you do have lots of add-ons and other things, this actually does get very, very large indeed. So let's now click on that again and click on SanDisk USB drive. And that should now move all of the contents of the application directly over to our SSD drive.
And here we can just see now, guys, now that we moved it, it actually gives you a much larger size. So it just shows that there was lots of other folders of this application, but now all of those folders have been moved over to our SSD drive. Okay, so test number four. What about certain applications that you just cannot move? Like for example, we can see here, um, if I go to all applications, uh, we can see I have Disney Plus, here it is. Let's click on that. And we can see currently it's using 43 megs of internal storage. But when I try and click on that, we can see it just doesn't open. We can see me pressing the button because the way the application is coded, it only knows about internal storage, which is why there's no option for us to move it until now. So that's one application as an example. Let me just see if I can find one more. I believe downloader is also one. Yeah, so I cannot also move downloader. So we have two applications that we cannot move to our SSD drive. How do we fix that? Well, the fix for this, guys, is if you back out of this, back up again, and in device preferences, we need to enable the developer options. Now, if you've never done this before, all you need to do is go into device preferences, click on about, scroll down, and where it says build number, you want to keep pressing the select button here seven times. And when you do that, you'll actually get the message saying that you are now a developer. As soon as you see that message, let's press the back button once, let's scroll down, and let's now go into the developer options. And just a quick disclaimer here, guys, um, you can cause serious issues to your device if you mess about with the settings in here, especially when you don't know what you're doing. So if you don't know what you're doing, I would not advise making any changes in here. Let's scroll down. And what we're looking for here is right near the bottom. Let's keep going down. And here is that key setting, guys. Force allow apps onto external, which means applications that were coded where they would not be eligible to move to any kind of external storage or adoptable storage, we can now actually force them to do that. So let's now enable this option. That's now all done. Let's press the back button. Back again. Let's now go to applications. Let's now find Disney Plus again. And let's hope this is now going to work first time because it's actually the first time I'm testing it. Uh, storage used, let's click on that. And there we have it guys, we can now migrate that application from the internal storage over to our SSD drive. So do give a thumbs up for that. Let's click on that. And just like that guys, we've now moved the unmovable application over to our SSD drive. Let's back out this again. Let's now also try downloader, just to make sure that the experience is consistent. Can I now click on this? Yes, I can. I can now click on SanDisk. That's now moved over. And can I use the application? Let's click on open. And we can see that's working absolutely fine. So that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. Lots of you are asking for different ways on how we can add SSD to our Android TV devices. So I do hope you like this one. And I will be doing a separate video on the 4K Fire Stick on how we can actually add an SSD drive to that. And once again, move those applications from internal storage over to the SSD. So if you want to check that out, make sure you are subscribed and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.